to your short necks turtles, which are more omnivorous in their terms of their uh, food feeding behavior, slum to our shores. There's only one that doesn't. The other six do. We even have our own basically endemic species of marine or sea turtle, the flatback turtle, which is only found in the waters of Australia and New Guinea as well. Now I'm gonna hand this one over to Sophie and I'm gonna show you uh, our long neck turtle. But first what we thought we'd do is I've set up this temporary tank. This isn't where this turtle would usually uh, be found, but if you look in the bottom there, you can see it's a Rankin's long neck turtle. Now this particular species is found uh, in central Queensland. It's a beautiful turtle and looks very similar to an eastern long neck turtle, which a lot of people would be quite familiar with. Now the reason we set up in this side this tank now is I guess to show you how a turtle moves in the water. I'm going to show you the difference between turtles and tortoises soon, but look how easily this turtle can manoeuvre around in the water using that web feet like paddles. Obviously they're perfectly adapted to swimming. But I also mentioned before that really long neck, that snake neck that you'll see uh, on this particular Rankin's turtle. Now you can imagine in the wild, the Rankin's turtle would be swimming around waiting for a small fish to swim past. They'd strike out, they'd grab that fish and that's obviously how they'll catch their food. But they're also important in the water in the aquatic ecosystem in the sense that they will eat carrion, dead animals that have naturally died. Uh, they'll go feed on those carcasses and eliminate that waste uh, from the aquatic water ecosystem. But how about we get this little turtle out and have a nice close look at that really long neck. There we go. Now, this is what I was trying to talk about before. Manny wasn't doing an excellent job, the Manning River turtle, but this Rankin's turtle is doing an amazing job here. It's folded its neck all the way underneath that overlying carapace, which will protect itself from potential predators. Now, the shell is definitely what keeps this animal safe. It's their home. And the shell has been evolving for around 240 million years. That's how far back we're talking about for the existence of these animals on the planet. At around 220 million years ago, we had our first fully fledged turtle species, animals like Pregannachiles. Now, very similar to a common snapping turtle that you'll still find living uh, in the southern part of the states in terms of their looks or their morphology. But they have been on the planet for a very long time. But one of the questions people always ask me about turtles and tortoises in particular is what is the difference between the two? I thought the best way to talk about the difference is to show you the difference. So right now in my right hand, we've got an Australian freshwater turtle species. But now I'm actually gonna show you a South African species of tortoise, the leopard tortoise. Now you've zoomed in nice and close, which is great. You can see the tortoise has club feet, elephantine feet, similar to that of an elephant or a rhino perfectly adapted to their terrestrial lifestyle, life on the land. Look at the feet on this particular species of turtle. They have web feet. Now, if you look at the feet of a sea turtle, they have flippers, perfectly adapted to their aquatic lifestyle. Now, look at the streamlined body of this turtle. Again, perfect for swimming, as opposed to the larger dome-shaped body that you can see on this tortoise. So typically when we're talking about turtles and tortoises, we're talking about the turtles as the aquatic species as opposed to the terrestrial species of your tortoise. But there is species of turtle and tortoise that can buck either of those trends. Species like the uh, uh, box turtles that you'll find in the Amer United States of America, they're primarily ter terrestrial in their habits. So yes, they can contradict themselves. At the end of the day, they are all teshidines, which means they really are all turtles. So a turtle that lives on land, lives on land is a tortoise. A turtle that lives in water uh, is a turtle. Now I'm going to pass the tortoise back now that we've we've had a really close look. Now, long neck turtles, as I mentioned before, are primarily uh, carnivorous. And as I said, this particular turtle will strike out, grab a fish, grab the fish and eat it. They've got that really long neck and they can eat what can be sometimes extremely long fish. But I guess the best place to see them is always uh, in, the water, in the water. There we go. Now, a lot of people will encounter these animals on a rainy day, active on the roads. A lot of people don't know what to do. The best thing to do if you come across one of these animals is always slow down. One of the saddest things you'll ever see is a species of turtle that's been hit on the roads. They're quite easy to see on the roads, so we should always keep an eye out for our 
turtle species. If you see a turtle crossing the road, slow down, let it cross, and if you do want to help it, get out, pick the turtle up and put it onto the side of the road in the direction that it was already traveling. Just by doing that, you might help save one of these animals out in the wild. And the reason they're moving around, either they're looking for a new water source, or sometimes, more importantly, the female turtles are actually venturing from the water to go and nest. They're looking for a nest site so they can lay anywhere, maybe depending on the species, you're talking about 10 to maybe 20 or 30 eggs. They're going to deposit those eggs and without that female having the ability to do that, uh, those hatchlings would not hatch. So always keep an eye out for migrating turtles on the road. Slow down for them and if you do happen to see one, you do want to help it, just move it onto the other side of the road in the direction that it was heading. In total, around the world, there's over 340 uh, subspecies, but they have to make up what is the world's most vulnerable vertebrate group outside of primates. Habitat loss, land degradation, and the use in legal pet and meat trade is seeing these animals being wiped out across the globe. Now, of course, there's things we can all do to help stop that trend kind of goes without saying, but always say no to both the illegal pets and meat trades. But also too, just by ensuring your plastic always goes in the bin, then it doesn't go on the grounds, in the rivers, and of course in the oceans. If we use a leathery sea turtle as an example, in the wild, leathery sea turtles only eat one thing, and that's jellyfish. What does a plastic bag look like as it floats through the ocean? Looks just like a jellyfish. The leathery sea turtle will mistake the plastic bag for the jellyfish, they'll eat the plastic bag, and they can die a slow and painful death. So always make sure if you use any single use plastic that it always goes in the bin where it's supposed to go, not on the ground. But my favorite species of turtle, my favorite species of reptile on the planet, I'm gonna show you that now. It's not just any particular animal, this is the coolest animal you'll see today, there's no doubt about it. Thank you, Sophie's gonna put that down for me. Oh, there we go. Now this here is Terminator, and Terminator is an alligator snapping turtle. Now, if you're from this beautiful country of ours, Australia, you don't have to worry about swimming along a river and bumping into an alligator snapping turtle. These animals are endemic to the southern third of the states. Their range starts in eastern Texas through Louisiana and the rest of the states to the northern parts of Florida is where you might encounter an alligator snapping turtle just like this. Now, modern day turtles and tortoises, they don't have any teeth. And if you can get that camera in there, you can see. But in the case of a tortoise, a lot of the time they'll have a serrated like beak uh, not in the case of this particular turtle, but she does have a beak, but you can see that, no teeth. But how does an animal like this catch its food? These are sedentary animals, they're ambush predators uh, when they're hunting. But you have to think, if you're a fish, you're a turtle, or maybe you're a small alligator, what would make you head towards an animal's head that looks as fierce as this particular species? Now this is where they have one cool, or very cool, adaptation. If you see on the end of her tongue there, Hang on, I'll open her head up a little bit. There we go. She has a worm-like piece of tissue on the tongue there. It's called a lingual appendage. Now what they'll do, snapping turtles, they'll sit underneath a log jam. They'll open their beak out nice and, nice and wide. That worm-like piece of tissue will become erect and start to wiggle around. A small fish will find that extremely inviting. They'll swim over to the snapping turtle to go grab that worm-like piece of tissue, that lingual appendage, and that's where the snapping turtle will crunch down with its beak. Now, snapping turtles, pound for pound, have an extremely strong bite. An adult male snapping turtle that might weigh 60 or 70 kilos has around 1,000 pounds per square inch closing bite force pressure. Now, that's about maybe a fifth of the bite force that a saltwater crocodile has. So if you are a turtle or a fish or an alligator that gets too close to the snapping turtle's beak, she's obviously going to crunch down uh, and it's game over. The turtle doesn't even have to get up off the couch uh, to find its food but a really cool adaptation that this particular species has it is unique to this particular species but it helps them attract food cut straight to them rather than them actively going to move around and forage uh, for their food now this particular individual is a female she'll never get as large as the males do uh, and honestly they are just beautiful beautiful animals to look at especially when you get to appreciate one up this close cool i might put her down on the ground because she's getting a little bit uh heavy do we have any questions, Caitlin? Yeah, people want to know, uh, what's the biggest turtle species in Australia? 
the biggest turtle species in Australia. Well, leathery sea turtles are still found uh, here in Australian waters. So they'd be the largest species of turtle, uh, not just in Australia, but on the planet. In terms of our freshwater turtle species, our pignose turtles get quite large, as do our Mary River turtles. They'd probably be the two biggest. What's the biggest turtle in the world? Yeah, leathery sea turtle. So leathery sea turtle can get to around 800 kilos as a really big female. And they can live for over 120 years before she takes off. I might pick her up again. Just get to go extremely large. Outside of that, you've got your Yanks River or Chinese soft shell turtle. Uh, and also too, uh, you would also have your alligator snapping turtle, which is found in the States, which also again grows extremely large, maybe 60 or 70 kilograms at full, full uh, uh, once they're fully grown. How long do turtles live for? Turtles and tortoises live for an extremely long time. One of the oldest tortoises ever recorded was 186 years old. So very, very long time. Uh, even our freshwater turtle species here in Australia can live till they're approximately 60 years of age. And that's why if you're ever considering getting a pet turtle, uh, you should take that into consideration. Not only do they grow quite large, there's this mistake of referring to our freshwater turtle species as penny turtles. Uh, at full grown, at their full size, they'll be anywhere maybe to 20 to 25 centimetres straight carapace length, and they can live till they're 60 years old. So if you are considering getting a pet turtle, you have to think about that. They need a really large space to live in, but also too, they're gonna live for a very, very long time. How long can turtles stay underwater? Yes, great question. So on average, you're talking anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, but they can actually stay submerged for an extremely long hours. Now, when it's really, Really cool, make cool climate species. Uh, they can even stay submerged for an even longer time. That particularly species that have adapted to staying underwater by using cloacal respiration. That's basically where they have they use a uh, gill-like structure in their tail or their cloaca, and they extract oxygen from the water. So they don't even have to surface to uh, take a breath using their lungs. Uh, instead, they extract oxygen from the water. Uh, the Manning River turtle would be an example of a turtle that could do that. And it's famous as the species from the Fitzroy River, which is called the bum breathing turtle. Why is it called the bum breathing turtle? Uh, so their cloaca is at the base of their tail there. That's where they extract, extract their oxygen from the water, which is so where their excretory organs are. So that's where they'll, sorry, their excretory glands are, so where they'll excrete uh, waste from, and also their reproductive organs as well. How many eggs can they lay? Yeah, it depends on the species. So uh, smaller species, there's a species from Asia which only lay one egg at a time. There's other species like sea turtles that can lay up to 200 eggs uh, in a single nesting uh, occasion. Are turtles endangered? Yep, turtles and tortoises make up probably what is, as I said before, one of the world's most vulnerable vertebrates right across the globe. Not just here in some of our most endangered, really, really easy ways. Just by protecting nest sites from foxes can help save our freshwater turtle species here in Australia. In parts of Asia and Africa in particular, it's quite unfortunate that these animals are removed from the wild and sold in the illegal pet and meat trade. They don't belong on a dinner plate, there's no doubt about it. They belong out in the wild and we can easily protect them by stopping those, uh, those, those, those different things. Okay, one last question. How heavy is that turtle that you've got there? This particular turtle weighs 10 kilos. So if she was fully grown in a male, not a female, she might weigh up to 60 or 70 kilos. Sorry, if that was a boy, she, he could weigh 60 or 70 kilos. Because she's a female, she'll max out at about 15, maybe 18 kilograms. She is quite heavy. Uh, so yeah, as I said before, getting a bit of a, a, a bicep workout. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed our turtle chat today. I hope you think it was totally awesome. Uh, keep an eye out for the rest of our videos over the next coming weeks. Lots and lots of fun. Uh, and if you can, look up how to help save our turtles out in the wild. There's lots of things you can do at home. Here at the Reptile Park, we're dedicated to saving our beautiful turtle species because who wouldn't want to live on a planet with animals like this? See you next time, guys. Cheers.